Manchester United. Manchester, Manchester United. A bunch of bouncing Busby babes. They deserve to be nice. What can I say? The video made me laugh. I wanted to put it at the start of this video. How are you all doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV. And in this video, we're talking about that man there. This man, this man, this man right here, Eric Ten Hag. And we're talking about transfers. Will he be doing the Busby Babes dance at the end of the summer after signing everybody that he wants? Because we all know full well that recruitment is a crucial aspect. I've been holding back on talking about transfers until we've got our man. We've got our man. Done. There he is. There he is holding the shirt. Now let's talk about transfers. And in this summer, how much are we going to get? We're hearing 120 million from some places, 150 million and 200 million from some places. Say, is t say he does get 200 million. What could he do? What would he do this summer? We're going to run through all of that, all the latest news on the developments of that. And we're going to run through each key position, which are these. Let's run through it all together. Actually, before I do, please, if you would, subscribe to United People's TV. It'll only take you one second. Go down there, join the community. It's growing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming this season with Eric Ten Hag. I'd love you to be part of that community too. But if we take a look at the news and how it's developed, this is from The Telegraph, and it's not just The Telegraph saying this. Telegraph, Sky Sports, the majority of the big outlets are saying this. Manchester United are prioritising the recruitment of two midfielders and a striker, although they're also looking at wide forwards and centre-backs. So whether or not it's going to be two midfielders, I'd say is a question. But there's no doubt that Ten Hag wants a midfielder, a striker, and that third signing, maybe a right winger, we know who the main target for that would be, and a centre-back. I think the, the the definites this summer are a central midfielder and a striker. And that third signing, I'm unsure of. But I'm going to run through each position, starting, of course, in midfield, because we all know it's been the biggest problem. And there are a lot of names on the list. Let's run through them all. Let's take a look at their stats, how they would fit in, what sort of suitability they'd have to the team, and where they'd fit in into the team. And, of course, he's on the thumbnail. He's a name on a lot of people's lists, and he's going to cost a lot more than £67.5 million. Declan Rice. Declan Rice is a player for me who has very much impressed me over the last season. He's really come on as a player. But what sort of midfielder is he? Could he be the midfielder that United need? We take a look at his stats here on FB Ref, and we can see where his strengths really lie. Pass completion, interceptions, progressive carries. If you ever watched Declan Rice play for West Ham, he is a ball carrier for sure. He brings the ball forward quite a lot for West Ham. Not necessarily does it with his passing, but he loves dribbling through the lines as well. And he does that very well. The problem for Declan Rice, of course, is this. He won't cost, oh, he won't cost 67.5 million. There's no way he'll cost 67.5 million. What we're seeing, actually, if we go back to the Telegraph here, we scroll down a little bit more. Look at that price tag, 150 million pounds. There is no chance that we sign Declan Rice for 150 million. So even though he would, in my opinion, I think he'd be a very good signing for United. I think we have to rule him out simply for the price alone, given what else is available out there. And then when you take a look, there's a lot of names on the list. I think there's one name on top of my list. I think it's Chuameni. Chuameni, of course, the Monaco midfielder who we were linked with last summer tentatively we didn't really go further than that but if you take a look at what his where his strengths really truly lie you can see where he would fit in because in my opinion this midfielder who comes in for Manchester United ball progression is probably going to be one of the most important things if you look at how uh, Alvarez or Graven Birch operates one of those midfielders is typically a ball winner whether it was De Jong uh, and Shizit Scherner uh uh, in 1819 in or 2021 22 with Graven Birch and Alvarez. Ball winner, yes, but at the same time, ball progression is so important. You take a look at where two of many strengths lie interceptions and tackles. 90, and this, remember, this is the percentile. So he's in the top 2% of midfielders for interceptions, top 3%, top 13% for tackles. Progressive, that, but look at that. 84, he's in the top 15% nearly for progressive passes. He's got strengths there. He's also got strengths in winning the ball back. I would say out of all the midfielders I'm looking at, so this is this is a starting eleven that could happen next season if we didn't make any signings. I think what you could see very much is a bit of this. I think that is a midfield duo that could probably work. Two players who are okay with at ball winning, but also okay really at progressing the ball forward. And... Uh, I, I question whether Fred's going to be 
partner. Who, who am I kidding? Fred's definitely going to be a key player for, for Ten Hag. I think he's going to shine in that system, but he plays a little bit further forward. So if you if we were to look at that and go, Sam, right, okay, so true of many, you know, he's he's good there. He's good at tackles, good interceptions. Yeah, he's very good. He's a big, he's all-round game. I'm not sure there's a better option than true of many, but let's run through loads of other options. And of course, one that you know I'd love is Ruben Neves. I'm really annoyed that we haven't signed Ruben Neves earlier. That we didn't sign him earlier. I don't think our football will be as crap as it is. Have we signed him earlier? Uh, lo and behold, we didn't. But if we have a look, of course, non-penalty goals. He's in the top 17%. Shots total, top 10%. Ruben Neves loves a bang from outside the box. Decent, prog decent in progressive passes. Decent in tackles. I would say Ruben Neves is probably one of the most all-rounded options we've got here. I don't think he'll be brilliant in any in anything. I don't think he'll be brilliant at ball winning. I don't think he'd be brilliant at tackling progressive passes, but he won't he'll be like a seven out of ten in all of them. Really all-round midfielder. Maybe that's the sort of signing we need. You let me know what you think about Ruben. I would not be upset if it was Ruben Neves, by the way. And you know that full well. As well as Ruben Neves, of course, Calvin Phillips has been linked to Manchester United. I don't particularly think the Leeds connection will stop him. Didn't stop Cantona, didn't stop Smith, didn't stop Ferdinand. I don't think it would stop Calvin Phillips, even if Leeds didn't want him to leave. But if you take a look at Calvin Phillips' stats, of course, you go down here. He's a person who, look at that, top one percentile of pressures per game. He would thrive in that Radnick system if he was able to get that four triple two in. Tackles top 4%, blocks top 1%. There's no doubt that he's an incredible ball winner. But in terms of progressive carries and progressive passes... Calvin Phillips falls a little bit short of where someone like Ruben Neves would fit, where someone like already in true many would fit, or someone like Declan Rice would fit. He very much is lacking in that regard. So in my opinion, I don't think Calvin Phillips is going to be the, the midfielder that comes in unless we do properly just sign a ball winner. Then Calvin Phillips is probably the better choice out of all of them. If you then, uh, for example, if you were to do that, you did that and then you came to this midfield and you say, right, okay, Calvin Phillips comes in. He would then operate uh, as Alvarez operates Ajax at the moment. Properly just operate as the ball winner, drop deep here, give the ball to Fred. Let Fred be the person who goes with the progressive passes through the lines, which he's decent enough at. I do think that there are better options for that, but that could happen, of course. And if there's another option for the Premier League, which I know a lot of you like, and that's Yves Basuma. If you look at Yves Basuma's game, again, it's quite all round. He's very good at pass completion, dribbles. There is top assets with tackles, interceptions, and clearances. Also very decent with the progressive carries. I'd say he's got a pretty damn all-round game. If we're going to compare him probably to already in Chiuameni. Chiuameni is a little bit more rounded overall. He's certainly better than Calvin Phillips in bringing the ball forward. Even Basuma has to be an option that we should consider, I think. There are, def there are so many options in this midfield in terms of who we could sign that it's very difficult to identify who the best one would be. My gut instinct is telling me it would probably be true of many out of all the choices. I think he would be available in the region of 50 million pounds, which given if our budget is 120, I think it's, I think it's going to be more than that. Uh, and I've said this before. I said it in today's live stream. Look, Louis van Gaal was given 179 million in his first year. Pep Guardiola was given 190, 190 plus. If United can give Van Gaal 175, you're damn right we can give the same amount to Ten Hag. It's about context and understanding what people are spending around you. He should be getting more than 120. I think so anyway. But of course, there's one thing that we I think we need to note in this. And that's the fact that I think James Garner is going to come in and be part of our squad. I think he's ready for it. I think it will happen. So I do think we'll only sign one midfielder and that second midfielder will be James Garner coming in and bolstering our options. If you're going big on one, who are you going to go for? Are you going to go for... Let's run through the options again. You've got... Declan Rice. Number one. Chuameni. Number two. Ruben Neves. Number three. Calvin Phillips. Number four. Yves Basuma. Number five. Who would you go for? You let me know what you think in the comments below. Me personally. I'm going for Chuameni. I wouldn't be upset at others. But I think if we're looking at best case scenario... I'm probably going to go for him. You let me know what you think about that in the comments. But moving on from midfielders, I think we're going to sign a striker this summer. And of course, there really is one name atop the list for a lot of United fans, and that's Darwin Nunez, the Benfica striker who really has sort of lit it up this year, scored in both legs in, against Liverpool, scored the winner, uh, even though Benfica obviously got knocked out, scored the winner against Eric Ten Hag, actually knocked out Ten Hag from the Champions League. He's a goal phenomenon. Look at that at the very top. Top 4% of all attackers of non-penalty goals. But 
there are definitely some sort of concerns. I think that will be fair to say about his all-round game. Look at the, some of these numbers. Assists, three, bottom 3%. Three shot creating actions, 1%. But that one there, pass completion, 1%. And no, that's not a mistake. He is not particularly good when it comes to p possession and playing fluid football. He's great at finishing. Incredible. Good at bringing the ball forward. Good at dribbling. Decent enough with tackles and inceptions off the ball. But look, at that would have to be a concern, I think, of United fans. You let me know what you think about Darwin Nunes. There's absolutely no doubt that the guy is lethal in front of goal. And maybe that's all you want in your striker. But maybe if you want someone who's going to be involved in the build-up play, maybe sometimes drop in deep, maybe Darwin Nunes wouldn't be the best option. You can let me know what you think about that. Probably looking in the region of £75 million. What have they got? 30? There's absolutely no way it's £36 million. I'll tell you that. I reckon €75 million Euros roughly for Darwin Nunes. But there's... I wouldn't actually put Christopher Nkunku down as a, as a striker option, but if we were, for example, to play with a false nine instead of a proper number nine, then someone like Christopher Nkunku could be absolutely fantastic. His numbers speak for themselves. Pop 1% in terms of attacking midfielders or wingers, he's basically the best with non-penalty goals. Top 8% for expected goals, top 7% for assists, shot-creating actions, pass completions, 83%. Touches in the attacking penalty area, 93. Progressive passes received, 98. Not particularly good with precious tackles or interceptions, but hell, he's an attacker. You don't need your attackers to do that. Christopher Nkunku, as I said, if you were to, if you were to sign him... Now, a key thing to understand here as well is, are we really going to sign a striker that's going to play week in, week out? Or do we have to sign a striker that's happy to dovetail with Ronaldo? It's one thing to think about. But maybe if you played United here and you play with a bit more of a false nine... Someone like Nkunku there could make a lot of sense. Or, as I said, if you wanted to go for it, you could go for Nunez, but maybe that's going to be lacking in link-up play. Of course, there are other options. Lots of other options. One that we have to talk about, one I don't think will happen, of course, is Harry Kane. If you're looking at his all... I'm not sure there's anybody in the world that's got a better all-round game. He's incredible at dropping deep, great at receiving progressive passes and dribbling the ball forward. He might only have a 40% pass completion, but I think that's because he tries a lot of good stuff. I think he tries to bring it forward quite a lot. Harry Kane's a very all-round striker. Incredible in front of goal. But also great at dropping deep, linking up. And that's why his partnership with Son has been so great. But in the same way that I'm going to say, I don't think we should really talk about Declan Rice. I don't think we could really talk about Harry Kane. 90 million down there is a price. I think it will be more than that. If you were to sign Declan Rice and Harry Kane, you're probably looking at the best. You're not going to get much change from 300 million. That's how much they, they would cost. And in the grand scheme of what United need this summer, I don't think we can afford that. So I don't think Harry Kane will be an option. There's loads of... This one's a bit of a curveball. Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Now, if you look at the stats, they're pretty damn alarming, right? Red's all over the shop. Great winning headers, though. But I think we've been... We have sniffed around Dominic Calvert-Lewin before. And I think if Everton go down, I think there's a possibility of United trying to get a cut price deal there for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. More towards the Sebastian Haller type of signing, but he worked at Ajax. I'm not completely sold on him. I'll be completely honest. There's another name on the list. Victor Osimen plays for Napoli, I believe. He has got a decent all-round game. I'll be honest, I haven't watched much of him, but I know he's a name that has been linked to United a lot. Well, not a lot, but he's a name that... There's been, we've been linked to so many players, standard, right, with Manchester United. He's one of the names on the list, but... Maybe United won't sign a striker after all, and maybe United will go after Anthony who, of course, is a right winger from Ajax, who has thrived under Eric Ten Hag. And if you look at his numbers, Green's all over the shot, man. Shots, top one, he's the best. Assists, he's the best. Expected assists, great. Passes attempted, progressive passes, carries, touches in the penalty area, progressive passes received. He's a true winger. And if we're looking at someone that's going to change our right wing, Anthony really would. 31 mil, you're definitely going to cost 30, more than 31 mil, probably more in the region of 50 mil. But do you think that we would go after a striker first or a right winger first? I personally think we'd go after a striker. And I would be very surprised if United actually signed a striker and a right winger. I think it would be one or the other. If I'm looking at which one we need more, he's definitely a striker. So the, look, the names on the list there, let's run through them quickly. Of course, it's starting off with Darwin Nunes, who's a name that everybody's got on their lips. Christopher Nkunku, as I said, he's more of an attacking midfielder, but you have to hold him in the conversation considering he scored, what, 17 goals and 15 assists in 30 appearances? For Leipzig this year, which is a fantastic return. Harry Kane, obviously he's a lethal goal scorer. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Victor of 
Ossiman. I got his name wrong. And then Anthony, if you're going to go to right wingers. You let me know what you think about those. But if we're looking at central midfield is going to be, should be our priority signing this summer. Absolutely. Striker should be number two. I think number three should be centre-back. And for me, we ran through loads of options there for midfield and loads of options for up front. I really think there's only main, two main options if we're going to sign a centre-back. And there's one outstanding candidate. And I don't need to tell you why, but you know why. Jury and Timber. I think, absolutely, if I'm going to choose who would be the, the right signing, it would absolutely be him. And I would probably do that. You'll notice Harry Maguire's not in that team. I would definitely do that. And the reason why, and this is a big, big thing. Eric Ten Hag, he relies on his goalkeeper and his centre-back. David, David De Gea is going to have to improve his game massively. Um, he relies on them to, to progress the ball. We're not just talking sideways passes. It's about being confident with the ball and playing it out from the back. That's the Ten Hag style. And that's where someone like Jurian Timber is quite literally one of the best in the world at. Passes attempted completely, progressive passes, progressive carries, dribbles, progressive passes received, and blocks. He doesn't necessarily get involved in tackles or pressures or anything like that. He's in the right place at the right time, and he brings the ball forward. He's extremely comfortable with the ball at his feet. If you're looking at that team there, I mean, that team there is transformed. You've got a new centre-back there who can play it out from the back. You've got a new midfielder there who can really progress it forward and add some ball winning as well. Now, Nunes, whether that's Nunes or not, I'm, I'm, I do have concerns about him. I think the concerns are fair. I'd be pretty damn set on Timber and Chuameni, but Timber just makes sense. And I think if he's going to bring anyone in from Ajax, I think it will be Timber. You can let me know what you think about that. Probably 50 million you're looking for Timber as well then. So if it's 50 for him, 50 for Chuameni, how much for the striker? It was probably between 50 and 75. So I think you're looking in the region of 150 to 175 for three good players, which is fine, considering we're getting Pogba off the books, Cavani, Mata, Lingard, Matic, five players off the books, over a million a week saved in wages. Plus, we should be able to get, if we sell them, depends if you do, money for Martial, Jones, Bai, if he's out of favour completely, which it looks like he is, and Pereira, in bet anywhere between 30 and 60 million for them. It all makes sense. It always does make sense on paper when you look at United's transfers. It's just rarely we do it. Now, I think there's one alternative, really, if it's Jurian Timber. If it's not Jurian Timber, that's Pau Torres. Obviously, we were linked to Pau Torres last summer after Villarreal won the Champions, won the Europa, not Champions League final, won the Europa League final against us. Just like Jurian Timber. He's very, very good with the ball. It's as you would expect of Spanish defenders, right? Um... Very good with the ball at his feet. Very good with progressive passes. Interestingly as well, though, very good in front of goal. Must be good in the air. Must be good from corners. I would say it will be between Pau Torres and Jurian Timber. Now, I would definitely go for Jurian Timber because of obviously the Ajax link. He would know the Ajax style of play. It makes perfect sense. And it's traditional, really. Traditional? I would say traditional. When a manager comes in to be linked with players of the club he's left. And Jurian Timber and Anthony, the two names from Ajax. I don't think we'll get both. I think if we're going to get one, it should be Jurian Timber. So if we're looking at what our lineup could be next year, maybe it's that. Maybe it is Darwin. As I said, Darwin Nunez, I don't know. I'm I've got less clarity on who that who the correct striker is than I do on who the right midfielder or the right centre back is for Ten Hag and his system. Dream signing for Ten Hag, no doubt, will be Jurian Timber at centre-back. It depends how high he puts it on the priority list and whether we've got the money for it. I personally think it should be two and many, but that could be any one of a number of midfielders. And we've ran through all of them there. Let me go through the list again here quickly. You could go to Declan Rice. You could go to two and many. You could go Neves, Calvin Phillips, Yves Basuma. Lots and lots of different names. I've gone for two and many. You can let me know who you think in the comments. And up front, I've got, I've got Nunes here, but I've really genuinely, I don't actually know. Darwin Nunes, Christopher Nkunku, if you're going to play more of a false nine, Harry Kane, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Victor Osimhen. There's loads of names linked there too. You let me know what you think about that in the comments, but that is the team that I've got there. Does that go full screen? Lovely. That's the team that I've got there. You can let me know what you think about that. There's no doubt that we have to get the recruitment right for Ten Hag. And now that he's in and confirmed, we can start talking about transfers. I'm going to do plenty more in-depth content on lots of these targets, the full story, tactics, and more... Uh, 
maybe speak to a tactics expert to get a real breakdown of a lot of these players and their characteristics and how and why they would suit the Ten Hag system. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As you always do, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Yes. Now we can talk about transfers. The revolution begins.